episode 362, I showed you how to export database records into a CSV or Excel file. Since then, I've received several requests on how to handle importing records from these file types. And that's what I'll be demonstrating in this episode. So what I would like is for a form to be down here at the bottom, allowing the user to upload a file that contains records and it will import the data into our database. Well, here's the view template listing out the records. And below here, I want a section for importing products. So, and then I'll have a form. I'm going to use form tag instead of form four because I don't really have an object to handle the importing at the moment. So this form will need to be submitted to some URL and have multi-part as true because it's going to accept file uploads. So I'll add a file field tag, just call it file and a submit tag saying import. Now the question is, where should this form be submitted to? Well, let's make an action on our products controller called import. So that'll be going to the import products path. This means I'll need to set this up in the routes file and I'll expand this products resource, giving it a collection route for, uh, let's say a post request called import. And then in the products controller, I need to make that import action. So what should this do? This should take the file that's being uploaded and uh, import it into our products database. Now the file is going to be passed in through the file parameter. And this is actually going to be a special uploaded file object, which includes a temp file. So Rails automatically is going to store this on the file system temporarily while we process this file. This means we don't have to use Carrier Wave or Paperclip or some other plugin just to work with uploaded files. We can work with them directly if we're doing something simple like this. But you might want to use Carrier Wave if you're wanting to do more permanent storage. Anyway, here I can just make a class method called import on the product to handle that. And then let's redirect them to how about the root URL with a notice saying products imported. Now we can focus on the model to handle the import behavior. Now I already have some code in here left over from the earlier episode on exporting the CSV data, but here I want a class method called import, which takes that uploaded file. And let's focus on importing CSV data first. Now I already have set up in this application config file to require CSV. So you'll want to add that to use the uh, Ruby's built-in uh, CSV library. So what I can do is call csv.foreach and then pass it a path to a file. And then it will yield to the block for each row of data. Now, if I pass in a headers option, it will look for a set of headers in the first row, and then it will use that in the row data. So what I can do is call product.create because I want to create a new record and then call row.toHash. So this way it converts that data into a hash of attributes. So as long as the column names map to attributes in my product model, that will just create a new record for each row. Let's give this a try with a simple CSV file to import a couple of records with a name, price, and released on fields. So if reloading this page and we get our import form and I can choose that products CSV file. If I import this instantly, there are my new products and it says they are imported, it works. Now something to make this even more useful is if we allow an ID column to update the records instead of always creating them. So this way, if they download the existing CSV file, they can just modify it and mass update the records. So here's that CSV file that I downloaded and it includes the ID column. So let's try modifying a couple of records here. I'll just add a two to the end of the name. So to get this to work, we'll need to change the way our products are imported. Instead of always creating a product, let's find one. So I'll use find by ID. So it returns nil if a product isn't found. And let's use the rows ID for that. Otherwise, we'll just create a new record. And let's set the attributes for these. And because it might include columns that we don't want to set attributes for, such as the ID, I'm going to slice off certain attributes from this hash, actually just the accessible attributes since we have some mass assignments set up here. So you might want to list these out manually if you're using strong parameters. And then let's uh, save the record. Now let me rename this because I made it plural, but it should be singular. There we go. So let's try importing this CSV file with the IDs included and see what happens. Well, it updates the records in place, adding the two at the end of the name instead of always creating a product. Cool. Well, now that we have CSV files working, how would we import an Excel file? Now there are several gems available to handle importing from Excel. In this episode, I'll be using the Roo gem because it provides a standardized interface for accessing a variety of different spreadsheet formats, including Excel and CSV. 
So go into the gem file for my app, I'll add the root gem into there, and you'll need to run the bundle command to install it. Now I also found it necessary to go to my application config file and require the icon v library into here. Unfortunately, this adds some warnings every time you start up your Rails application. Hopefully the spreadsheet gem that uses this will move away from it soon. Now that we have Rue installed, let's use that to handle the importing of our product records. So the first thing I need to do is grab a spreadsheet from Rue, and I'm going to do that in a separate method, let's call it open spreadsheet, because the logic is a little bit complicated. Now a Rue spreadsheet has a row method which will return an array of values for that given row passed in. So that's the header row, so let's store it uh, in a variable. And then we need to loop through all the rest of the rows and access the content for each one. So let's loop through the second to the last row, which we can call by last row. And for each of these, let's, that's going to be the uh, row ID, let's grab that row. Now here comes the tricky part. This returns an array of values, but I need to convert this to a hash with the header columns being the keys. So to do that, I'm going to first to put this in an array with the header, and then I can call transpose on this array, which is going to put the keys next to their values. And then I can convert it to a hash like this. So that is going to be the row hash like the CSV library gave us. So this means we can do the same thing we did before to import the records. Now the last thing I need to do is handle the open spreadsheet method, which I'm going to paste this in because uh, just to save us some time. Now what this will do is build up a different Rue spreadsheet depending on the file extension. And I have to use original file name on the uploaded file because uh, it's stored in a temp file which doesn't have the extension on it. Now you might want to do this a little bit differently, especially once an updated version of Rue comes out because the uh, git master branch at least has this under a Rue namespace. So you'll need to add that for each of the spreadsheet types. Also, this third argument to ignore is going to tell Rue to not raise an exception if the file extension passed in here doesn't match the type. Okay, let's try this out. I have this Excel file with our columns and a couple of records, and this is an XLSX type. And if I select that file and then import it, it looks like it worked. There's our products, Seven Wonders and a box kite that were in that Excel document. Now one issue I found with this solution is that it doesn't like to import the same file that is exported through this application. I get this OLE2 exception. However, files generated by Excel seem to import just fine. So if this is a problem for you, you might want to change the format of the Excel file that's generated or import it using a different gem such as parse Excel, which I have had a little bit better luck with on importing older file types. Other than that little problem, this import script is working great. However, one thing I'm not addressing here is validations. What if we have a validation on this product, maybe validates presence of price and what isn't supplied in the uh, spreadsheet? How do we handle that situation? Well, it's a little bit difficult to adapt this solution to handle validations. So if you do need validations, you might want to go with another approach entirely. So here's an example of what else you might do. Instead of having the form displayed in line on the product listing page, we can put it on another page and that way we can provide some further instructions and show the different column types that are allowed and, and what they can be. And then let's try uploading, importing a document here which has some invalid data. And then I get some errors displayed telling us which row inside the spreadsheet and what the error message is so that we can easily correct it and then try uploading the document again. Now I don't have time to build this entirely in this episode, but I'll walk you through this app and show you how this works. So starting at the import products link, this is going to go to a new product import path, which is handled by this product imports controller. So we're using another controller and another model in this case to handle the product importing. Keeping this a separate model allows us to use form four inside of the new template. So if I check this out, I'm using form four to display this form so that we can easily display the errors just like we would any other model. However, this model isn't stored in the database. So if we check it out, we can see that it's a simple Ruby class. And I'm using active model here to simulate active record. And you might want to switch to active model model in when you upgrade to Rails 4. Now when I attempt to save this model, it's going to import the products and then see if they're all valid. And if not, it's going to display the errors by adding errors to this active model. And importing the products works basically the same way as I had before. 
So the end result is that it will show us any validation errors that occurred while I was trying to import the products. Now I went through this pretty quickly, so you might want to check out the full source code at railscast.com. Well, that's it for this episode on importing records from CSV or Excel documents. Thanks for watching.